Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the rocks. My friend Tom and I are fishing from a deep water rock mark right in the north of Scotland. Now this video is going to be slightly different in format than my usual ones because for two reasons I'm keeping the location secret. The first reason being is that uh, I hold a duty of care. Being that if, if some anglers that are possibly not as experienced as we are come and try and fish this rock mark and they hurt themselves, I'm responsible. And the second reason being is because this isn't my mark to share. Tom has been fishing here with his family for, for many years and he's asked me not to, so that's that. I will try and make the video as comprehensive as possible, but I've never fished from this mark before, so I don't quite know what the camera angles are going to be like or anything like that. Also, at all times, our safety, Tom's and mine, and the fish's safety is paramount. So if it requires both of us and I can't man the camera or I can't set it up, unfortunately that's just going to have to be the way it is. I will do my very best. I will explain what I can, I will show what I can, and I hope you enjoy the video. Cut frame, back to Tom bent into a fish. Now we missed the first bite because we were too busy trying to get the camera on. We decided with this one that all we would do was get bent into the fish to make sure we don't lose it. But the same as before, all we had was we just had a couple of little nods and then it just went. Tom's lifted into the fish now and he's playing off deep, deep down there. We are fishing a really deep mark so the line is going pretty, well almost vertical isn't it? Yeah. My back's loving it, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> well you were the closest one to the rod. You look really strained there, Johnny. Are you sat feeling comfortable? Yeah, I'm, I'm all right here, mate. I'm, I'm pleased for you. Just waiting for other rod to go and then we'll have a double hook up, then we'll really be in trouble. I was going to say that it would be interesting then, wouldn't it? There is a bite. See it? Slack, yeah, I'm gonna have to hit this one as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's some fun now. We've gone from we get the ourselves in these daft situations, don't we? <laughs> yeah, it is nodding away. We were originally fishing a few rods, but as soon as Tom hooked into that fish, any of the rods down tied of it. We we'll reeled them in. This one rod that's left out now was up tide of it because we were thinking if the fish is going to run anywhere it'll run down tide. So we've cleared all the rods out in its path. The bites that I was getting on there and the way when I struck and it just let go, I think it is a spur dog. Been having a few of the baits coming back ragged up and it is we think it is little spur dogs. <laughs> You're doing very well over there, you've been really quiet. I'm uh <laughs> go and have a look. I can't tell whether or not you're gaining on it or it's just taking you for a bit of a walk. Yeah, just uh, that last five, ten minutes of hard work effort just got lost in about 15 seconds. Don't quite want to try stick that rod like I did to your lovely popping rod. Tom's referring to one of my sharking rods that he snapped a couple of years back. Yeah, on the shallower marks, it seems that you can get them and actually get a bit of a fight there. You're like, almost playing this like you'd play it from the boat. Yeah, I feel like it's, I don't know if it's on mud or on a, a steep mud bank or something. Can walk up a little bit there. See there, all he's doing is he's just keeping maximum tension, so he's using the rod to fight the fish. By keeping a bend in the rod, it's putting pressure on the fish at all times. So as the fish, what it's done is it's sucked itself to the seabed. By Tom... Oh. Yeah, I'm really winning. Yeah, you're I'm just going to say, you were gaining on it <laughs> at one point. Oh, yeah. 
unfortunately, <laughs> well, I don't know if you can see it there. See it there on the surface? We had got Tom's skate up to here, but you can see there's just been a load of really big swell coming. We had it beached into that pool there. That big wave's just come there and just lifted it straight up. At least the fish is healthy at the moment. Yeah, we did get it, we did land it, we had it on the shore. By the time it took me to run back and get the camera, we just caught it. Just as the last wave come, just to see it on the surface there, I'm going to see if I can run along and show you. Well, you did your best. <laughs> Never mind. Just one of those, it, literally just as soon as we got it beached up, a load of big swells come. I mean, you can see down there now, swells dropped away to nothing. About five minutes when we were down there, I don't know if it must have been a tanker going past a couple of miles away, but a load of big swells just come and just washed it straight out. But aye, that was a, it was a big meal, that was over £100. Let's get the baits back out. Right, what had happened there was just the same as happened last time. Busy baiting up the other rods. This rod just hooped over and then line just started peeling out. So we didn't get time to turn the camera on. I don't know if you can see there, it's... Even with John's measly arms on it, there's a bend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Even my little pipe playing around. <laughs> this bait actually had only been out there 10 minutes, hadn't it? Oh, easily. Is this the one that you had the last one on? It's the one, yeah, same rod, same uh, same position. There's any other rods out, thankfully. This scratching rod's the nearest one, and that's out to distance. This fish is. I was. <laughs> I was going to say, this fish isn't putting up as much of a struggle as what Tom's did. Tom, up oh, that scratching rod of yours is going, mate. We have, we have just had... Another David the dogfish. Yeah, we have. Uh, people are quite like this because... <laughs> they say a session isn't complete without a dogfish. They're almost like the channel mascot. I have just had a dogfish as well. We have had what we think is a lot of spur dogs coming through. Because they just keep, keep ragging the baits. And also we're finding teeth marks in like the heavy mono. We're going to try and see if we can pull one of them out as well. But at the moment, while the big fish are here. We've certainly taken a like in that rig with the luminous shrink tubings. Uh, yeah, when we Seems to be a distinct favourite. When we've dealt with this fish, I'm going to have to move in a minute because it's coming quite close to the rocks. Is we'll, um, when we've dealt with this fish, we'll talk you through the rigs and the baiting up. What I'm doing is I've, I had moved the fish off the bottom a bit. I'm just trying to keep sustained pressure, but you'll notice that apart from this squashing my lady part, is I'm keeping the rod relatively low. So I'm using the rod, and I'm never going higher than about there. Because any higher than that, you lose the best power of the rod and you run a risk of high sticking it. Unfortunately, I've got some bad news. The first fish that we played, I played it right at this mark and then we took it across once it was up near the surface. What we tried to do this time was we tried to, once the fish was sucked onto the bottom like it was, we were going to move to where we were going to land it and play it from there. And as soon as it got sucked to the bottom and me and Tom started to move, we slackened off, I slackened off line a little bit. As soon as I created that little tiny bit of slack in the line as we were moving, the fish decided to go for a run for it and slipped the hook. So yeah, I've, I've, I lost that fish. So all we've got to do is just regroup, rebait, recast, catch another one. So far, a lot of like dogfish bites. The skate, like I say, it just goes, just hoops straight over and line starts peeling out. Because all we've got here is as the rods are set up, look, we've left it on a really light drag. So yeah, what we're looking for is like a little rattle and just go whoo. There, look. It's like a doggy. Doggy or a spur dog. Right, well, this wasn't the fish that I was playing a minute ago. <laughs> but, yeah, dogfish. A little tiny one. 
They are almost quite nice to see when they've been when they've been caught from deep water and it's real dark. Because their eyes do shine back. Like little cat's eyes in the world. Yeah. That one's practically still got the egg sack attached to it, hasn't it? Little dogfish donut. Not what we're after. Now the bite from this just looked like a dogfish. It wasn't until I hit it that I found out that it's actually a little bit heavier. So we're thinking it might be a ray. A couple of little nods, but it's going round and round in the water. There is a nice male. You can tell it's a male by these claspers on here. A nice male thornback ray. It's not the ray that we're after, but it's nice to see. You can see there by all these masses of thorns, like all the way on its cheeks, all the way all over its tail. Well, they're called a thornback. Some of them even get thorns on their stomach. Stick him down to the water and let him go. Nobody with that bank. Good feeling. Coming up the bank. Oh, he's digging. When you get that nose pointed up and you can keep it kiting yeah, up. Yeah, well, that's, that's what I'm trying to do. It's just. some type of an idea how big it is. That's how big it is. That was some good recycling John on the coal you caught earlier. Yeah. Right you're not gonna be able to hear me. Oh god I tell you what I'm well puffed out. You're not gonna be able to hear me very well because I'm right down near the water and there's quite a bit of swell. But that is what we're after. That's how big he is. Just going pulled up into this into this rock pool here to keep him keep him breathing. But you can see look on the sides of his wings he's got a lot of these are marine leeches look sea leeches he's got them all over him the poor guy Three, four, five, six, seven, each one of these here is a scar from a marine leech. Poor fella, these marks here, there and there, these are actually little hooks and it uses those while breeding. But yeah, he's also got spa. You can tell that this is a male by these claspers here. He is a good, I'd put him at being, I would put him there at being 100 pound. We'll try and get, I don't think we've got a tape measure with us. We'll measure him with a length of cord and I'll work it out and put it in. But yeah, that's what we came for. <sighs> Amazing. You good? Come 
Komm, Big Lad. Check them out. Right, now that we've got a couple of minutes spare, I'm going to get Tom to talk you through the rig that we've been using. I've done a bit for um, skate from the shore. Started off with ordinary pulley rigs, but found you'll get a funny bite or you know disturbance where the bait's not on the floor. So gone now to up and over pulleys. At least it gives you that nice length of line. How long would you say that is? About five foot, just shy. Yeah, just shy. You know, at least then when the lead's on the floor, your bait is definitely pinned on the deck. We're not worried about a skirt. If your bait's, if you're fishing a deep water mark and you're fishing a pulley rig, well, if you know, yeah. the bait may not be on the bottom. That's, that's exactly that's exactly my thornback rig for that reason. Just obviously you've beefed it up massively. Yeah, I mean, what's what are the lines? What are the hooks? Sorry. So I use eight o or a ten o Cox and Roll meat hook. Crimp the barb off. Now it may come across a little small. I've never had any problems. Don't even use a T bar half the time. You can just you know take the hook out. No problems. I don't see the point of the barb with the amount of pressure we've got there. We've got uh, snoods made from £200, um, the reason for that one, a Blue Peter moment. Yeah. I've uh, I did quite a bit of research before we come up and talk to a few people and some people were saying oh you only need 100 or oh you only need 80. We've used 200 today and we'll show you the reason why. Hopefully the camera will make that out there, you can see a lot of fray and damage. You see how chaffed up all over the black there. I mean that had shrink tube over the top and it's there's a lot of damage there. I wouldn't want to continue using that rig. You know, checking the rigs constantly after each fish, certainly worth the while. If you've driven a long way, put a lot of time and effort in. Also, these these massive thing. fish like this, they're not being put off by a little bit of heavier line, are they? <laughs> no, certainly, uh, certainly not the case. So we're uh, we're going to bait up today with octopus. We've done very well on it. John kindly brought them up from uh, Cornwall, so they're on their jolly holidays. Yeah. Very special Cornish octopus. I did catch these in another video, so I'll tag that into the description of here. So these are a perfect bait size, however, what we want to do is try and get a bit more scent out of these baits. So what I tend to do, I'll use John's sharp knife rather than my old blunt scissors, keeping fingers safe. If you just invert the octopus, so we're going to try and get that scent out as much as possible. Nice clean hands. This is why I'm letting Tom do the demo. <laughs> He'll go home and make his sandwiches like that. I'll just eat my sandwiches like this. So, to start off with, I've, I've came to the top of the bait and I'm keeping the hook point proud. Obviously we're going to elasticate that, but you want to start off with a nice proud hook point. If it's like this, it's no good. Nice and proud. Well, that's, no that's it, that's the part that hooks you to fish. If this yeah. isn't sticking out, you're not going to hook it. If you're casting out and sat there for two hours and yeah. you get a run and it's dropped, it's a frustration. Find the end of the elastic, that was a nice task. I wouldn't be worried about using too much elastic, like John's this alluded is an, to. This is another conversation with Bible Cameron going, oh, you'll put it off. I was like, you're joking, aren't you? Yeah, it's got a mouth that. Dustbin lids. Well, honestly, that the biggest gate that we've had tonight, their mouths have been that big. So yeah, be generous with a bit of elastic. Once you've formed a rough shape, always try to make sure the line comes directly out of the top. Don't elastic it so the line's like this or like this. Nice and neat out the top. Is that sort of when it? Go through the air or it spins yeah, it, it, it wobbles spin in the water once you've got a bait that you're roughly happy with what i like to do and thankfully we haven't had issues today is try and stitch the hook in position if the hook's loose you know it might slide sideways. and i just if you come across on a diagonal 
and then switch that diagonal you're almost stitching the hook in position doesn't really I mean I have to put a you know a fair well, bit of can, effort you can see there because you by crisscrossing it there you've you've laid the hook in place yeah something right check it you know I'm pulling pretty hard there it's not pulling through that's not going to pull through that should stay a relatively nice bit but then once that's clipped down that should stay in position and what I do at the top of the rig is I open out a rotten bottom clip you've just got a little canny link haven't you yeah and then I just got hands are rancid but yeah and then fold that over so we'll keep clip I mean today when we were fishing actually started in the daylight yeah and they're staying clipped down right I'll show you there that the reason it's called an up and over is because it starts it goes up from the lead up over the canny link and down again so it's an up and over I mean if this was a pulley obviously then you would only have that much snoo yeah so when you're fishing a deep water mark your lead is on the bottom and your lines on an angle like it's been today yeah if there's a good tide run sometimes and it's even off the bottom yeah. so at least with the up and over clip yeah. you know, no problems that bait is on the bottom fantastic tom thank you very much no worries there you go, a fantastic demo and an explanation of the rig that we've been using. Screaming drag, fish running. Hit it, boom. It's going for it then, wasn't it? Just a little. Yeah. Literally just returned that fish and man. Come back up here and this bait here. We were just looking at it and it was just rattling like that. And I said to him, I says, we've probably got another one here. But as soon as he turned around and got hold of it, just hooped straight over and started screaming line off. I think it's on the bottom. Yeah. Some distance out as well, which is. We were just saying. But the first flurry of fish that we had, we had absolutely nothing, no bites, no out. Then all of a sudden all the fish came on in like a one hour window and then it's gone dead again and we were thinking that was with the tide going in one direction and I'd kind of said well I imagine that they're going to go all the way in one direction and when the tide turns they'll come all the way back. And it kind of happened again didn't it, we had, we had a quiet spell and then we started getting dogfish bites and then all of a sudden we had a couple of skates at the same time. Tom lost something, we have no idea what it was. It was you were saying, weren't you, that it yeah, was... it was quite erratic and it was fight, it wasn't, uh, you know, up so high in the water, moving fast. A slack line of bite, and then every time you got, every time you caught up to it, it ran, didn't it? Yeah, funny, funny fight. You can't see the whole rod, but there's a rod tip there. You're right. Stiff back. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> we put ourselves through some punishment. Just in the idea of the and the idea of fun, don't you? Driving up, you know, there's the excitement and getting the bait out, getting ready, and it, yeah, it's gonna be real fun. This, and then uh, you get hooked into something in. like this, <laughs> and you just think, what have I got myself into? We were talking about this a few minutes ago, well before all the all the commotion started. And it was it it was saying, can you find a way of explaining to someone like every the the plethora of emotions that you go through, like the excitement, the anticipation, and then like when you'll see a rod tip twitch and you get all the adrenaline. And then if you lose it, just the absolute heartbreak and then frustration. Just despair, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. And I said, I've tried a few times, but if you have to explain it to someone, they wouldn't get it anyway. And yeah, considering that I drove 10 and a half hours to be put through absolute agony just to get that fish, it was worth it. Worth it 10 times. We're currently 
we're an hour in, just over an hour, like an hour and a quarter in. We've been doing it in half an hour spells just because it was well, just unending. Tom's managed to finally get it moving off the bottom. There we go. That is. Well, I have to stand back to be able to get a good picture of it. But that is absolutely mammoth. I'm going to say, easily £200. Got width of its. Just width of its head. Yeah. Thickness of it, it's the way it's taken to us to take it out and away. But thickness of the tail as well. It's just. Absolutely mammoth. And again, lots of these scars from all the leeches. Massive female coming skate. There's the hook. Barbless eight o meat hooks. And that was the bait there. Octopus. Trace is all out. We'll return the fish. Catch it on the next big wave when it comes in. Watch yourself. She's on but she'll go mate, she'll go. Oh, well done. Straight down. Well well done mate. Yep. Pen class 8000 and the old Grey's Nitra. Nitra. Packed up at home time now. God, that last fish really did take it out, but I tell you what, it was worth it. <laughs> I think I'll need a good night's mm -hmm. sleep. Couldn't even get a measure on it, it was just too much going on, too many waves and all that, but that was massive. I was um, seeing quite a few, seeing quite a few really big fish and that was, that was up there at £200. Just the, the density of it. Well, we've come to the end of the session. It is absolutely, <laughs> it's been, it's been a long slog. Um, ten and a half hours to get here. The first session that we had, it's, um, well, we, we pushed it to be honest. It was very, very windy. You managed to get a storm back ray. Same didn't, day we'd driven up as well, wasn't it? Didn't I'm get tired. any skate bites. Yeah, after driving that full distance. And then the next day we tried and it was just like a snow blizzard. <laughs> With all the best intentions, we tried to go fishing, but it was just like 30 mile an hour winds and driving snow. The third session today, yes, produced the goods. Uh, how many drop runs? Two drop runs. Well, three, I mean, whatever that thing what I was into, yeah. Possibly three drop runs, four hooked fish. I lost one of them by slackening the line when we were trying to move positions. Three landed fish. So that's it. In three sessions, we've landed three fish. Two males. Uh, I put them around about the £100 mark and that monstrous female. We were fighting it. We took turns in it just because we, <laughs> Tom was like, oh yeah, spell me for 15 minutes and I'll pack the other rods away then. But yeah, it was good that we managed to spell each other off because it was an absolute bruiser. Yeah, I think the session was supposed to end about two hours ago, right? It was we? <laughs> the session was supposed to end at about half past ten, and it's now half past two. So yeah, thank you very much, Tom. It has been an absolute pleasure. No worries. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. All the very best. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Tom's trying to find a way of holding that fish to make it look like it's a big one. Pretty much. Been trying that dark out all my life. <laughs>